Last time on Resident Evil 5. Chris Beefcake Redfield met Sheva Pixie Alomar. A budding romance blossomed but turned awkward before being put suddenly on hold due to the tragic butchering of the town butcher. Find out what happens next on today's episode of Let's Play Resident Evil 5. Good morning, everyone. Bane here with another episode of Let's Play Resident Evil 5 for PS3. Um, as you may know, I ended my last Let's Play going through the uh, first chapter, or chapter 1-1, so we'll be going through chapter 1-2 today. And without further ado, I think we'll get right into it. So whenever you load a game, it's always going to come up with the organized screen, which basically allows you to use what money you have to buy um, weapons that were that could have been found in the last stage. You might not have found them in the uh, in the last chapter, and if that's the case, then either you can go back and play that chapter and grab the weapon, or you can buy it from the store. Now, usually it's really not worth buying it from the store. You're just better off um, going and going through the stage again. Because, I mean, look at it right here, this VZ-61 machine gun is 2,000 money. Well, we only have 2,000 money, so if we were to buy that, if we didn't grab it last chapter, we'd have no money left to spend on upgrades. So, usually not worth it. So, I like to do a little bit of organizing. I like to give Sheva the healing items. I sell her handgun. And then you'll also find another handgun in your inventory. We will sell that as well. It'll give you ammo. Give that to Chris. Actually, uh, since you have limited inventory, I will remove some of the bullets from Chris. He doesn't need that many. And Sheva gets the machine gun. So this way, separate weapons, we're not sharing ammunition, and she can waste all the machine gun ammo she wants to. So, actually, and I will go and upgrade. I don't have enough to upgrade the critical, so I will just upgrade the firepower. My personal favorite. <laughs> Alright, and we'll get right at it. Now, the first chapter... Uh, chapter 1-1 one one is very much a tutorial chapter, and then it throws you into a massive action scene where you're fighting for your life. If uh, You can go back and watch that if you haven't already. Um, chapter 2, or 1-2 one here, is much, much more of an exploration chapter. Uh, it it's the first chapter where you really just run around a lot and explore more than you're actually fighting. Um, there's a weapon in this chapter, just as there was in the last chapter, but uh, this one's a little bit harder to get at. Uh, I know the first time I played through, I missed it completely and ended up buying it from the store. <laughs> because I didn't actually know you could go back and redo chapters without ruining your progress. So. You live, you learn. <laughs> I'm going to climb up this ladder here, and we are going to do a team door opening. Not that, you know, Beefcake here couldn't just open it himself, really. Actually, I like the loading screens in this game with the, um, the, the Resident Evil timeline it gives you. It's a kind of a neat thing for big Resident Evil uh, lore fans. Uh, I'm really big on the lore and I enjoy learning everything I can about a storyline when it comes to long series like this game. Alright, first broken ladder of the game. You see broken ladders like these, you can do what's called an assist jump. So basically you toss Sheva up and she gets to hang out up there for a bit. Um, this one's kind of pointless, because you see the key in there, but you can't get at it. Uh, but it is um, 
an introduction to the mechanics of the assist jump. Uh, after you beat the game as Chris, you unlock the option of uh, playing the game as Sheva, which it's very it, it is still the exact same game, except that the camera is over Sheva's left shoulder instead of Chris's right. Um, so it is it does take a little bit to get used to, as well as um, when you do assist jumps like that, obviously you control Sheva after the assist jump. So you get to go up wherever Sheva goes. So which is kinda cool. I mean, there's not a whole lot of times where you take hugely separate paths or anything like that. But it's still kinda fun, kinda cute. Alright, I'm gonna break open some fruit there. Um, major thing in this game is just to... Ow! Why did that... Wow. <laughs> Apparently, I was weaker than I thought. I apologize for that. Almost died there from like a single enemy. That, that would have just been embarrassing. <laughs> right. Uh, get her to pick up that herb. And we're going to continue on. There's a bad guy right there. Stop moving. Oh, they always move out of the way. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to finish off this guy. And then I will show you... Way to get that key thing. Oh, die already. <laughs> Alright. Um, oh, oh, where the hell did that come from? What the crap was that? Sorry. <laughs> I don't know where he came from. Alright, he's dead? He's dead. Okay. <laughs> they kind of dissolve. Alright, so we're going to go this way. There's another crate down here. Get some ammo. Gold. Gold works, too. Gold is useful. Alright, um, <laughs> this is uh, my first playthrough. I missed this broken ladder completely, but basically just toss Sheva up here. Now, while she's up there, you kind of want to move back from the ladder, because, well, nothing's happening at this very moment. As soon as she grabs this key here... Oh no, look! Enemies! And they would basically, if you stayed right by the ladder, they would come down literally on top of you. Um, not the greatest thing, especially this early in the game when you don't have uh, a good selection of weapons and lots of ammo. So you wanna, <laughs> you wanna be able to survive. You wanna be, you know, you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. Just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> Work, working nights now, so it's a little rough to get up in the afternoons. Whoa, you were not dead. I thought you were dead. All right. Oh, hey, ah, what's that? I, I keep forgetting where all the enemies show up. Usually I'm better at this. <laughs> it's just, just stay down. All right. We're good. Is he good? Yeah, he dissolved. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna break that barrel. Ah, I, I knew that one was coming. Right, straight punch, boom! <laughs> Beefcake stomp! Oh, there's another enemy. I saw his shadow. Beefcake punch! And beefcake stomp again. Oh, wait, I missed! Uh, no. Stupid stairs. Beefcake shoot! <laughs> Oh, no. Okay. No more beefcake stomp. Okay. Yes, I call him Beefcake. Leave me alone. Everyone deserves a pet name. <laughs> Alright. Um, excuse me. Uh, this is also the first level uh, with the BSAA emblems in it. Now, for those of you who don't know, the BSAA is the organization that Chris and Sheva actually work for. Um, it's something about regulating and stopping bioterrorism uh, caused by the viruses that ended up on the black market thanks to the Umbrella Corporation from the early games. 
Um, Come on. Okay. In okay. almost every level, there is at least one BSAA emblem. I say almost, because not obviously quite almost every level has one. <laughs> I'm gonna punch you off a building. Beefcake punch. Took out her head. I punched your head off, literally. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's uh, BSAA emblems in almost every level. There's 30 total in the game. And basically, you shoot these things, and they will give you... Uh, they help unlock bonuses for you later on. Now if I can just find it. It's around here somewhere. <laughs> oh, crap. Where the heck did it go? Oh, wait. Did I see it? Okay, it's around here somewhere. Let me just double check my notes. Oh, okay. Right. I got it. Let's see. It should be... Okay, I've, I've, I have totally lost my BSAA emblem. Oh, what is wrong with me? What is it? Over that corner. Oh, eh, okay. Um... Oh my god, I don't know why I'm having so much troubles with this. I, oh, oh, well, there it is. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you see that green little medallion there? That's the BSAA emblem. Basically, just shoot it, you've unlocked it, and you're done with it. Um, that's the first of 30 in this game. There's two more in this chapter. Right, and we're just going to move on and ignore the fact that I totally messed that one up. <laughs> Ooh, cutscene. Aw, what a pretty lady. Help! Somebody! Nobody can hear your scream. <laughs> Alright. Well, before we go help the lady, um, this is, was the whole point of picking up the key. You can't get into this building without that key. And look what's waiting for us. The shotgun. One of the greatest inventions of all time. <laughs> no, not really. But, uh, yeah, this is the first shotgun of the game. If you don't pick this one up and you decide not to bother buying a shotgun, you won't find another one until Chapter 3-3, I believe. So it's a good idea to get this one, or if you don't feel like replaying the chapter after you've, if you've missed it, then buy it from the store. Again, not worth it, but... Um, like it's, it's cheaper to grab it in level, but if you don't feel like going through level again, just buy it from the store. It's, you need a shotgun. Your shotgun is extremely useful against all enemies. Oh, that's... Help! Let go of me. Ooh, beefcake. Okay, where is my... Oh, I'm holding too many grenades. Oh, screw you. Beefcake punch! Are you still a holy crap? Okay, right. I forgot about that. <laughs> she has this massive worm coming out of her head. See, and that's what happens when you eat bad meatballs. You get worms. Massive worms. Spiny massive worms. That come out of your head. Oh, thanks for the help, Sheva. Die, massive spiny worm. And die, person I don't know, without a massive spiny worm. Yeah, so see, I just used all my shotgun ammo on a single enemy. Good job, Alan. I mean, I'm not Alan. No. Oh, fine. Be that way. Okay, we're going to move on. Um, I'm just talking to myself at this point, but don't mind me. 
It happens quite often, actually. Oh, wow! Ah. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Okay. Uh, maybe try paying more attention to the game and less attention to the sound of your own voice. Beefcake stomp. Alright. Shoot you, beefcake punch. Yeah! Falcon punch almost. It, it almost looks like the Falcon punch from uh, Super Smash Bros., doesn't it? Beefcake stomp. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> stomp. <laughs> right. And now there's going to be more enemies to stomp, right? Right? No? Uh, oh, there they are. Yes. Come to me. Come to me. Oh, whoa. Okay. Something happened that uh, wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, beefcake punch. And. No, I can't stomp you anymore. Oh, uh, that was a waste of a bullet. Help me! And we're gonna help. Yeah, beefcake, help! <laughs> Look, I did some good! Okay, another beefcake punch. Alright, we're gonna have her pick up the machine gun ammo there. Uh, I will get her to pick up that herb. And she picked up handgun ammo, so I'm gonna request that from her. Now, there's a little tidbit, um, there is an achievement, I don't remember exactly what it says, but it's something about earn a certain level of trust with your partner. Now, when you ask stuff, uh, request stuff from her inventory, um, if you press the O button, uh, I'm not sure the corresponding button on the Xbox uh, controller, I think it's the B button on the Xbox, but on PS3 it's the O button. Um, right after she gives it to you, you will actually thank her. Now, if you can do that three or four times in a row without any other, um, without pissing her off or anything, or yelling at her to do something, um, basically your trust level with her will go up, and three or four times in a row should net you that trophy. Beefcake smash. Um... If it doesn't, just keep requesting stuff from her and keep thanking her, uh, basically. And try not to call her or send her anywhere or just say, come on, and all that, because that kind of pisses her off. Move on. Oh, 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 no. Okay. No, that was just a soldier guy. A dead soldier guy. Um, hello? You alive? Oh, I can investigate. Well, look at that. He's already dead, apparently. Not that, uh, him kind of s uh, shambling forward and then falling at our feet was not a clue that he was already dead. Apparently, he's already dead. Alright, second BSAA emblem of three in this level. See this water tower? It's right there on the frame. One shot, nice and easy. Honestly, the the three emblems in this chapter are probably the easiest to get out of all of them. So we're going to pick up some gold there. Um, now, don't go through that door quite yet, because over here there's a chest with some monies in it. And monies is a good thing, because monies lets you upgrade your weapons so you're more badass. And we're going to do a team smash. Team smash! Boom. Happened in here. It looks like they got dipped in oil. <laughs> oh, there's someone alive. Hey, who did this? The meatball gang. Herbals. He got away. Beware the meatballs. The meatballs set us up. What is It'd be creepy if like meatballs could actually do that. Deal. Evil, evil meatballs of doom. You ever seen Attack of the Giant Tomatoes? It's an uh, old like, I don't know, 70s movie I think, maybe 80s horror movie, where literally these tomatoes, giant tomatoes, came alive and started eating people. 
Imagine that with meatballs. <laughs> uh, yeah, I crack myself up. I think I'm funnier than I probably actually am. So, we'll just go with that anyways. Uh, yes, I'm talking over a cutscene. But hey, you have subtitles there. You can read it if you really want to. I mean, how many people are watching this who haven't already played the game and know exactly what's going on? And if you want to just sit and play the game, or sit and watch this with gameplay and enjoy the cutscenes, well, I apologize that I'm talking over the cutscene. So, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Ha! Ah, there's another crate. Ha ha ha! I am the crate destroyer. <laughs> See, get it? Not great. Crate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, beefcake smash. Now, if you're wondering how to do that, you haven't played the game very much. No. Um. Usually, if you just press square once, it'll just open the door. If you press it a second time, then it will actually kick it open. It's uh, good to use, especially if there's lots of enemies around, because if there's an enemy right behind that door and you kick it open, it'll hit them and kind of stagger them, and you can follow up with a hook punch. Um, obviously not the best thing because they're trying to get in the door and you no longer have a barricade between you and the bad guys, but if you're willing to take the chance or you need to get through that door, then kicking it open, doing a beefcake smash, is always a good idea. Alright, ammo. Now, this is the first boss fight of the game. There's two separate ways to beat this. One is the conventional way, to put enough ammo into the bad guy to kill him. Unfortunately, there's no way I could manage that at this point in the game uh, with the weapons and the ammunition that I currently have. Uh, uh, okay, I shouldn't say no way I could do it. If I really, really tried hard, I might be able to manage it, but it would make this video a lot longer and a lot tougher to do. So I'm just going to do it the way it's kind of meant to be done uh, this early in the game. So after I collect all my ammunition and she collects healing supplies, we are going to head back this tunnel towards that door that required the key to get through. And cutscene! And again, this is what bad meatballs will do to you. No, not quite. Um, you'll see it in a moment. There. This is what bad meatballs will do to you. <laughs> That, that is just nasty. Oh, the tentacles came out his eyes, man. It came out his eyes. Game over, man. Game over. I think that's what got Alpha Team. No, really, you think? Hey, let's put bullets into it. Look at us. We're so agile. Alright, so y you get a good look. This is called Ouroboros. You get a good look at it, uh, you see those orange things that essentially make up its shoulders. Um, basically, those are his weak points. Um, if you're going to take him out through conventional means, come on, get into the room, do the cutscene. Uh, if you're going to take him out through conventional means, you want to aim for those orange growths. Um, these canisters on the side as well, you can knock them over and he will, Ouroboros will kind of walk over it and get it stuck inside of him, at which point, oop, dodge, yeah, quick time event. Okay, so basically I had Sheva sit by the controls for this furnace, wow, that was a lot easier than it ever usually is. And I lured Uroboros into the furnace, and then when she hits the lever, the doors slowly start to lower. Um, now you have to stay in there for a bit, but then get out before the doors close. 
If the door is closed and you're in there, you die. If the door is closed, you're not in there, but he is, he dies. So, nice and simple, right? Um, anyways, uh, if you're trying to take him out with conventional means, use these. You can knock these over. Um, he will pick it up. Uh, very reminiscent of a boss fight from Resident Evil 4 where you use the f uh, liquid nitrogen canisters. Uh, except those are just propane or something. Um, and basically, once it gets stuck in your Ouroboros, you shoot the canister, it explodes, he starts writhing around on the ground in pain, and you start unloading into him. Plain and simple. Uh, again, this early in the game, you probably don't have the ammunition or the strength of weapons to do it very well. Uh, it's going to take a while and pretty much all your ammo so I advise against it. Uh, last BSAA emblem of the chapter, right there. Give it a shot, right beside that fan. Um, nice and easy, just remember that when you pick up your ammo after defeating your Ouroboros, right here, and it's right down there by that fan. So, nice and simple. Not exactly in plain sight, but easy enough to find. And we're gonna ride the elevator up. And that is the end of this chapter. Um, a little bit longer than the last one, uh, again, much more with the exploration as opposed to the just fighting off a horde of Magini zombie things. <laughs> so, we're going to just watch this cutscene a little bit. Uh, they're being very, very cautious with their guns out and all. Odd that they didn't come in this way in the first place, I mean, obviously... This is where Alpha Team started, and they went right downstairs and got to where they needed to go. Why, Chris and Sheva didn't do that as well. Now, who knows who the masked figure is? Raise your hands. Sadly, I can't see if you raised your hand or not, so I'm not going to spoil it for you people who don't know. So, ha! scumbag Irving left behind to set us up. Irving. What it did to Alpha Team. Irving. That, that's really not a terrorist name, is it? Well, not to me. I mean, you, you could put in something much more sinister than Irving. And I don't think he even has a last name. Like, you know, uh, Excella Guillaume, or Chris Redfield, Sheva Alomar, Albert Wesker, Jill Valentine. Everybody has last names. I don't think Irving does. I have to double check that. Yeah, it's not in my notes, so. <laughs> Request the mission update. Your mission stands. It's like, yes, the entire Alpha team has been wiped out by this one oozy mass meatball creature. And they want to send two people in by themselves. Smart. Smart people. So like, proceed to the mines. It's like, yeah, that's awesome. Expendable. <laughs> you ever get the feeling you're expendable? God, that line is overused. And there we go. That's the end of the chapter. Ooh, look at that. Okay, my clear time sucked. But, hey, I still got an S rank, so yeah. Go me. All right, uh, thank you for joining me for this. I was probably very annoying, and if I annoyed you enough, feel free to like the video. If I annoy you even more than that, then feel free to subscribe, because I'm going to continue annoying you with more parts of this game. <laughs> uh, again, this is my first Let's Play, so if you have any tips, uh, advice, con con constructive criticism, uh, let me know in the comments below, and hey, I will try to fix whatever I'm doing wrong, because I want to make the best product I can for all you people out there who actually are willing to sit down and listen to me blab about this game. <laughs> so, anyways, this has been Bane, and I'd like you to remind you to keep our gene pool clean, spay or neuter your stupid people. Have a good night.